Hello, I'm Charlotta and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to draft this really easy vintage inspired collar you can add to any existing sewing pattern or to any garment you might want to draft. Let's have a quick look at it first. What it is, is a funnel neck but rather just being a bias band which is stitched to a normal neckline. This is a beautiful v-neck detail which means while our, bi our collar is on the bias, the stitch line actually meets at a right angle. And you can have lots of fun with different checks and stripes to make it even more of a highlight. It has a real 1960s sporty feel. It's great for autumn, winter. It has the same detail at the back and it will work in lots of fabric on dresses and tops. And the best thing is it's really quick to draft. All you need is either your normal bodice block pattern or an existing sewing pattern with your seam allowance taking off. And the other thing you need is your hat circumference. So get a tape measure and measure around the widest part of your hat. And the reason being is we are drafting this out of a woven fabric. So we have it on the bias, so it gives us a bit of stretch and also makes it really comfortable to wear. But of course, unlike, unlike a jersey neck, we can't stretch it over our head, so we have to make it big enough to actually put it on and off. And with this measurement and your blocks, you can now draft this collar. The first thing you need to do is to take your head circumference measurement and divide it by four. You can see I've traced around my front and my back just a half because it's an identical pattern. If you're using an existing sewing pattern, trace it through as well without the seam allowance. So these are my stitching lines, not my cutting lines. You can see I've extended the center front and the center back. And all we now need to do is mark a quarter of our head circumference on the center front and on the center back neck. And what I do is I'm using my ruler and I'm laying it so it's 90 degrees to the center front and then I move it up and down until it hits the shoulder line and I draw a guideline there. For the center back I'm going to first of all measure my shoulder and then also draw again a line at 90 degrees and that should hit at the same point at the shoulder if it's slightly different the seven the quarter of your head circumference in the back then you go with your shoulder measurement because it might be that your block is sort of the neckline might be slightly different, the right angle, depending on your body type. So, but it's important that on the back you have a right angle and you hit the same shoulder point. It can be the same measurement, but it doesn't have to be. And again, we're going to draw a guideline there. That's our first lots of guidelines. What we're now going to draw in is the height of our final neck. So that is completely up to you. I might make I made mine quite high so I can fold it over. Um, so I made mine altogether 10 centimeters high. Um, so I'm gonna draw it in at 90 degree to my new guideline. And I'm also going to mark it on my center front and center back. And of course that's completely up to you. You could make it really oversized or very um, nice and neat. It's up to you. I'm now going to draw again a line at 90 degree to my center front going through both my measurements and at 90 degree to my center back going to both my measurements. And I always measure in two places and use my 90 degree um, line on my ruler just so everything is very precise because if it's wonky it's gonna look odd on your pattern. The last thing we now need to do is draw on our V-shape. And the V-shape, because it's on two bias, we are going to cut it 
at a 45 degree to our center front and center back. So you can see on my ruler, I've got um, 45 degree angles. So I'm going to lay them on my center front and then move my ruler up or down until it hits the same spot on my shoulder. And that's my neckline. I'm going to do exactly the same on my back. And that is my back neck. Let's put on some notches on the back. I always like to put on two notches. And then on the front, I'm going to put one notch on and that's going to help me. Stitch it together later on. What we now need to do is trace out our front and back neckline. I'm going to keep my center front as a seam so that way I can add um, stripe fabrics meeting like that. You can of course also have it on the fold. It's up to you. I'm keeping mine with a seam because it adds a nice detail. You can see I've added a knot, two notches at the back again and a notch at the front. What I now need to do is trace through this bit, so the front insert, and I also need to trace through this bit on the back. I'm going to do this on a new piece of paper. And what I'm going to do as well is leave lots of space above because I'm going to fold it in a second and extend it because we are working on the bias and it's best practice to always cut out the whole pattern piece on a single layer of fabric. I hope you enjoy this tutorial so far. If you're a big fan of colors and like to add them to existing sewing patterns or draft your own, and if you also, like me, love vintage style, then you might want to have a look at my collections of colors I especially created to add to any sewing patterns or to design your own garments. I've put a link to it in the description below. It's got 14 different colors, a mixture of contemporary and vintage with some sewing tutorials and just lots of really nice designs to try out, add to any pattern or use to design your own clothes. Now let's get back to finishing this collar. You can see I've traced around my front neck. And I've added seam allowance to my center front, my diagonal and my side neck as well. I've marked the center front and I've marked my straight of grain, which is of course parallel to my diagonal line. Now, because we're working on bias, we don't want this just on the fold and we're cutting out. What we do is we fold our paper exactly on our cutting line. And it's always worth then checking that with a ruler to make sure it is a 90 degree angle. And then you can pin it together in two places and cut it out and you end up with a whole pattern piece. I have a center front and a center back seam. If you don't want a center front and center back seam, all you do is you fold your paper again. Again, double check everything is perfect 90 degrees. And then you put a few pins in and you cut it out at one piece. What you end up with is one big piece you can then lay onto a single layer of fabric and make sure the bias is even. On the fabric, this will be the visible collar or roll of my neck. And this part becomes the facing. Um, so it will actually end up looking like that but because it's an attached facing um, we can stitch all the side seams and if you have a center front back and back seam in one go so it makes it much easier to construct once you've done the front do the same from the back and then of course on your front and back bodice you just add your seam allowance along the diagonal line you have to cut off And then you also add seam allowance along your shoulder, your armhole, your side seam. 
and add your normal hem. Now you know how to draft this collar. To finish off, let's quickly talk about how to stitch it. And thankfully, this is also really easy. You treat this as any separate collar. So what you do is you cut your front, your back, you cut out one front collar, one back collar. Then the first thing you do is you stitch your shoulders on your garment and you also stitch the whole side seam on your front and back collar pieces together, either side. And if you have a center front and center back seam, you stitch those together. So you basically end up with a tube for your collar. And then all you need to do is to insert that tube into your square on your neckline. And it's just straight seam, so it's relatively straightforward only thing you have to be a little bit careful is that um, the bodice will be on the bias and the collar on the straight of grain so if you want to you could stabilize your bodice with either a bit of fusing tape or running stitch first and also of course you got those corner um, so you need to stitch really carefully to exactly that corner and then you need to snip your garment right to your stitching line and then you can open up and then continue stitching up to this point and then of course do the same on the back and then you can just fold over your collar and either stitch it to the same stitching line or stitch it to a lining if you want to let me know if you've got any questions or comments or if you made this collar in the comments below i'd love to hear from you and never mind thank you for watching this tutorial and keep on drafting